Welcome to the series of how these renderings were made. Today we are going to analyze this project made by David Mayles, architectural visualizer from Slovakia. To create these images he mainly used SketchUp, 3D SMLX and Corona Renderer. As he did not like the concept of recreating existing projects or images, he decided to design a house to his liking, putting his knowledge and skills into practice. The concept of housing underground was not a well-known and popular idea of sustainable housing, which made it more unique and relevant for this purpose. The house concept started with a pencil and a sheet of paper, then he moved it to SketchUp. To transfer the ideas and sketches to 3D, he always uses SketchUp, mainly for the basic outline of the house and simple geometries like walls and floors. Modeling in SketchUp is very easy, but make sure to use groups, components, and layers all the time to make your project go more smoothly. Since you use SketchUp only for simple shapes and geometry, you usually only use the 1001-bit tools plugin. A tip for SketchUp would be to use debugging window, model info, stats to clean up the file, as deleting objects does not necessarily remove them completely from the cache. After I am done with the basic SketchUp model, I import it into 3D SMX for more details. Moving from 3D SMX to SketchUp works perfectly as the imported objects are always aligned in position. Layers are also imported, which is one of the most important parts of project management. It is important to spend time on layer management. This makes it much easier to navigate when necessary and to save time to hide elements you are not working on at the moment. Once the project is imported into 3D SMX, ready and organized, start with common adjustments and cleaning up the messy geometry imported from SketchUp. A basic and simple trick is, convert everything to editable poly, edit poly modifier, select all vertices, weld 0.1 millimeter. This is necessary, as SketchUp often exports geometry with many duplicate vertices which can cause problems later. Next, I move on to adding details to the building to give it more realism. Remember, the more details, the better and more realistic your image will look in the end. In this case, the wood siding, the terrace and the parking structure were done in SketchUp and imported into 3D SMLX as one element. The windows and the rest of the details were added in 3D SMX from libraries he has stored on his personal hard drive. We move on to the furnishings inside the house. Even when only doing exterior images, it's vital to add some interior furnishings to make the image look realistic. Leaving it at that with just windows with heavy reflections and textile curtains is a bit naive. In this case, the only areas I really had to concentrate on were the kitchen, dining room and living room plus the hallway. The process here is to find 3D models of furniture that fit his concept. To do this, I look at sites like Design Connected, 3DSKY, Bentanji, Model Plus Model and Evermotion which I will leave you the link in the description. If you don't find anything suitable and you have something specific in mind, the next option is to model it yourself. In this case, the kitchen base was modeled from scratch in SketchUp mixed with some downloaded appliances. For the basic materials, he set up a Corona Sun with an H dry. In some cases, he uses small light sources to check the reflection. For the more detailed materials, he used an indoor H dry that mimics real lighting and reflections very well. This H dry is from CG Source. Most of the time, he creates new materials, but when there is not enough time, he uses sample materials from Corona Renderer Library which work very well as a base, with some adjustments, dirt and scratches, they can become more interesting. In general, try to keep your materials as simple as possible, 
but almost always add some variation through the corona ambient occlusion map, either with corona layer reddental or directly in a diffuse channel, using a dummy red map to more easily distinguish the dirt layers. Use PBR materials whenever possible, but sometimes, when you can't get some material to look right, you can always go to YouTube where you can get a lot of free knowledge, as you are doing now. But nevertheless, I recommend you to experiment as much as possible and see for yourself what works best for you. Don't try to copy everything you see on the internet and create your own workflow. He also put in a car. These are the material settings I use for the car. For interior lighting, he used simple models with corona lights as a light source, with a very subtle warm light atmosphere that enhances the mood. Then there is a small fire in the fireplace and some spotlights for soft and soft shadows. During the interior lighting setup, Turn off or turn down the ambient light so as not to set the values too high. For the exterior lighting he looked for a good H-dry to illuminate the scene and observe the overall reflections, atmosphere and mood that the image generates. I needed the H-dry to act as the main environment, which saved a lot of time by not having to make the entire environment in 3D. He found the H-dry he needed at Shrihaven. Camera placement and composition, one of the most important steps in image creation, is something that will get better with experience and ideally, it is best to take inspiration from well-known photographers in architecture. To have the help of the composition and the general rules on screen, I use the image Comfelper script. The terrain was modeled in SketchUp and then imported into 3DSMX. There had to be two volumes, one serving as the basic ground and the second as the ground covering, north facade and the roof. Some noise is always added with a noise, so it doesn't look flat. For the materials he used several from Megas cans and some textures from Ard Textures. Individual layers were drawn over the geometry and a small rocky road was made simply using editable shape and corona distance map. Once the terrain is ready, the next step is to import the vegetation models, which are mostly from Evermotion, Viz Park, Max Street, Gaxis, and also some dark Stelling Sart models. I will leave all the links in the description. The bigger the variation, the more realistic the result will be, although it also depends on your RAM. How? Remember to use proxies. For grass, clovers, and other simple plants, he scattered them with Corona Scatter. For the placement of shrubs and hedges, he simply dragged and dropped individual models around the file in the desired positions. Sometimes vegetation models are also placed in the background to fill in window reflections, although in this case this was not necessary. The trees were also placed manually in the desired positions. For the ones closer to the camera, he used the most detailed ones. For the vegetation seen in the reflections, a tip here is to use a non-reflective black volume placed inside the house so that the vegetation can be seen and placed correctly in the window reflections. Correct reflections help a lot to achieve photorealistic results. And finally, Post-production was a fairly simple procedure. Most of the time, the only thing used is Photoshop and Camera Raw to enhance and modify colors and contrast. In this case, I also added some grain which often helps images look less generic. I then added a loot to create the desired overall mood. We leave you with the final animation, but first if you found the video interesting please like and subscribe to analyze more projects.